So these are, this is a, a simulation, this isn't a real observation, but a simulation of two neutron stars colliding. But what we're gonna hear is the real observation. That's the gravitational wave. The neutron stars collide. But because neutron stars are made up of stuff, when they collide, it's spectacular. It's a firework, right? So this incredible collision happens. We can't see any of this actual detail. It's about, what, 130 million light years away. Mm -hmm. But for two weeks, about 70 satellites and telescopes around the globe, triggered by LIGO's listening to the gravitational wave, point in the direction of the sound. Right? And it's basically half of the entire international astronomy community. Points in the direction of the sound, and they observe this firework over every band of light imaginable over the next two weeks. What was that about? Well, that's spectacular. <laughs> and, and why is it so spectacular? It's spectacular for a couple of reasons. And it, we've all, we have always said it in LIGO, and, and people supporting us, that, that this is not just a detection of gravitational waves but rather a completely new field that's gonna look at the universe in a different way. And that isn't, that isn't just BS anymore. It's, it, turns it was out BS until about two weeks ago. Well, it was, yeah. it was wishful thinking. It was wishful thinking. wishful thinking. But now it's a reality, and that is so important because what it's done, just this neutron star itself, in fact, we expected to see neutron stars before we would see black holes for a very simple reason. We had no way of estimating how many black hole pairs there were. A very, that first discovery of a black hole pair back almost a year and a half ago was, said something else to all of us. It said, aha, black holes live together. That was something we didn't know. And that, that, uh, that, that they're binary black holes. I mean, we, we could have guessed at some of that, but we didn't know. The neutron stars we knew ahead of time. There had been many, many measurements of different binary systems of neutron stars. And we always did all our sort of first calculations of sensitivity being able to detect something could we see neutron stars? Because we know neutron stars exist, because yeah, we see yeah. them in our own galaxy, but yeah. this was far outside our own galaxy. Yeah, but we expected that to be yeah, the case we did all over. It. That maybe if you made our instrument more and more sensitive, you would be able to look outside of our galaxy. Mm -hmm. And that's absolutely critical to this whole Now, this detection. might be yeah. one of the most widely studied events in the history of astronomy. I think it is. I think over the course of the next several years, yeah. the fact that it tells us so much, like we have this complete portrait of it, it's, it's as though we're adding the soundtrack, right? Yeah, well, this, let me just say what, what, yeah. what it's leading to is something called multi-messenger astronomy. And multi-messenger astronomy is something that the NSF has made a new shibboleth out of. And, they, and I'm saying that in a good way, not a bad way. That's one of the things they see for the future. And it comes from the fact that you can look at nature with many, many different wavelengths of uh, electromagnetic wavelengths, but also now with gravity wa gravitational waves and with neutrinos and with high energy particles. In other words, you learn from each of these different techniques something brand new about the system. We had been suspected that many of the short gamma ray bursts might be two neutron stars colliding. Well, now we know for so, sure. So gamma ray bursts are some of the most energetic events yeah. that we've seen in the years that nobody really understood what the source was. That's we were right. just getting the most high energy light conceivable yeah. on the electromagnetic spectrum from very far away, very powerful, but we didn't know what they were. And now we know that they're neutron stars colliding as at least one candidate. Yeah, and we know a couple of things about that now. Because we saw the gamma ray burst, two or 1.7 seconds after we saw the gravitational wave collision, the collision between the two neutron stars, we know a lot of stuff. We know that gamma rays and gravitational waves move very much the same velocity. So we know now for sure that gravitational waves go at the velocity of light that a lot of the heavy elements, the elements that are beyond in the periodic table, that's the table of, of all the different elements, that things that are heavier than the middle of the table, <coughs> like, type, like tantalum and gold mm. and tungsten and platinum, some of these precious metals, but all uranium, these heavy, many of those heavy elements, much of them are made in neutron star. So collisions. whatever gold jewelry you're wearing was probably made in something like a neutron star collision. That's right, yeah. That's pretty spectacular. Uh, I want to close on, on what the future is, because we are just starting, and then I want to open it up to questions. But before I do that, I just you know, want you to tell me what your greatest aspiration is for the future. I mean, now you've got black holes, you know? 
and you've gotten the neutron stars and the gamma ray bursts. And so what is it you are imagining for the boldest future for for well, this kind of I mean, uh, I, uh, a way of like listening to the universe as opposed well to look, just looking at let it? Me, let me put it to you in the most direct way. Gravitational waves have opened a field which allows us to look at some things we knew about. We knew about neutron stars. We have not yet seen a supernova. We'll learn a lot about a supernova if every that's an exploding star because gravitational waves are so penetrating. They don't get stopped by anything. So we look right into the beginning. Now, the thing is that there are things we know about and we see them in a new way. That's one thing. What's certainly going to happen is we're going to see things which we don't know anything about because this is a new way of looking, and we're going to have to figure out what it is. That's going to be another piece. And at some point or another, and I, I don't think it'll be with LIGO directly, but the other techniques are doing this, and maybe later on in space, we might be able to see really what happened at the very moment the universe started. We might be able to listen to the Big yeah. Bang. It yeah. might have actually yeah. made yeah. a bang. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to me, that's, of course, the other things I've worked on. That, to me, was always the thing that drove me. Yeah. Yeah. 